to show off my Murphy bear. I like to call it the ultimate Murphy bear, if you want to use those words. And you can find out, uh, watching this video, uh, what does it mean, this car available? Why would you put that up there? Hi, Kevin Duffy again. Uh, we're going to show uh, part of the process of making a Murphy bed. I know that there's a lot on YouTube, but I think ours is a little bit uh, unique and a little more challenging. What I did, even though we're on a cabinet shop or whatever, I really haven't done a Murphy bed in all the years, in 30 years. Uh, I'm not sure why. A lot of people, I think they're a great idea for spare rooms anywhere else and, and to not overpower. You have guests and it's very easy. You can use them in medical emergencies, meaning you have a small room by ground level. You can at least whip out a, a bed for somebody. So I, I can't stress enough that why I don't do more of these. But they are time consuming and expensive. So I just bought a kit like everybody else. I went easy DIY. Yeah, I'm not getting a, a plug for this. Um, why I went there, I saw some of the other videos. I liked the shocks that they had, and I liked how thick metal their hardware is. So that's what that's what did it with me. Some of them had like springs, and uh, there's e there's other ones with more heavier shocks. But they, they got this rated for 45 to 75 pounds, which is more than enough to handle any any uh, bed and I don't have to worry about it like popping out for kids you know these things stay locked so you basically have to go through the cutting list which is it's a lot it's something like four sheets of plywood I've already cut a couple pieces over there I have my doors already cut so you see it's pretty it's pretty intensive uh, I'm not used to doing it this way I'm used to my own drawings and going at the plan because I don't have to follow anybody else. I'm going to do this. And I'll do a couple things on table saw to save it. I had red tape here to keep it or plastic because it was binding a bit. I'm right by the ocean and you can see this is worn off. I haven't had a chance yet to peel it off. I say, oh, next job, next job, but I haven't done it and I really should. So what's important is making sure your fence is parallel with the blade. Right there, I'm right on. I don't even need a gauge. Like I can go right here and I'll go lock it. Sometimes when you lock it, they move ever so slightly. So take that in consideration. Make sure it is. If it's turning this way out, what will happen is when you go, you're drifting out, and when you're pushing your sheet, it'll be like a little gap like this, and you're not on the fence. And when you're not on the fence, then that's when bad things can happen. All right? And if you go the opposite way, and you go in V, you'll pinch. You'll go in there, and it'll, it'll just, the blade won't be cutting straight. It'll be cutting on an angle like that on your plywood. And then that's why, and it's pure common sense. There's no mystery, there's no voodoo. That's it, that's all. And you won't have a problem with your table saw. I've never seen anybody, you know, I've worked at shops with 500 people, 200, 100 throughout my years. I've never seen people get cut with these things. You know, I've heard of one guy going like this, going reaching and realize the blade's on. Like, yeah, well. You know, make sure no rings, no watches, anything else like that. Nothing around my neck. I got the microphone. And those are the big things. The other thing is binding, which can easily be taken care of with a little bit of wax. You know, just, you don't need like a huge amount. I know I have stuff on my table here. The other advice I would give is I was on a, a forum once years ago. Maybe I shouldn't say years ago, maybe five years ago, four years ago. But some guy was debating a table saw compared to those panel cutters or those track saws. And at the time, they were just starting to, to come out or get popular. And, you know, I, I couldn't believe the, the, the price of those things, like $1,200, $1,400. And I went to him and he, I picked out a saw for him. You know, I went there, picked out the best bag for the buck. And then he went to me. And he was going to do a lot of work. He was, he was actually going to open up a little company. 
and he went with truck saw. He said he was scared of the table saw. And then I was saying, well, I just kind of put my hands up in the air and just said, well, maybe you're in the wrong business. The, the table saw is as safe as you make it. However you make it, it will be that safe. They're not dangerous. The only thing, like I will show that I don't do anymore, I learned the hard way, and I've seen it done in some of the YouTube videos, and I, I wish they wouldn't do it. And I, I call them out on it. It's, it's not a good way to teach somebody. So right now I'm just buffing it, and I can feel how slippery it is. Now, I'm gonna hit my fence a bit, you know, like that, nice and slippery. So I have no binding. I got melamine here. What you could do is, you know, <coughs> I have my start in a garage, and is get a combination table saw workbench. You know, you can work there. I have my wood laid out here. These are pieces that I, I don't want to bury just yet because I got my other wood, and I like to look and see, okay, how much wood I got. Am I running out or whatever? Um, I also recommend when you get your saw, get two blades. Get a ripper, a pure ripper. I got a Diablo. It's getting burned there from the mahogany. You know, like I can get maybe oven cleaner and clean that off. And here I got a 60 toother cabinet blade. Maybe keeping the same manufacturer. Diablos are pretty good. People say they're a little cheaper. I think they are. Uh, thin, do you have thin pure? These ones are not as thick as the cabinet grade here. So this blade's a lot thicker. I don't know, I'd rather have a heavier blade with the plywood, maybe a little thinner ripping wood sometimes, or vice versa. But I have a four horse, what is this, what is this? five horsepower saw. It's not top of line, but get it bolted into the ground. That's it, first thing you do. You could do this with the cabinet saws, those ones with the, the belts on the back. Uh, I had one of those. Those those work great. They, they would easily go through plywood, and they do have a decent fence that you can set up. Um, the one thing I don't do anymore is this. I won't go longer like this. Uh, no more. I've done it. I used to do it. I used to be like you know when you're younger, yeah, you know. Then I had a boat to me like this. And, ah, you know. My better half was watching me at the time. She was kind of shocked. I had a big black mark, but more importantly, it was pretty dangerous. It's it's because you're gonna you're gonna cut all the time. You're gonna make a thousand cuts, two thousand cuts, and in that cut, you're gonna be tired. You're not gonna have light. You're not gonna have this. So always this way. Now I'm gonna do a little test cut on this to see how the blade, because this is a big difference between the ripper and the 62 fit. You can see I got a super clean cut and that's cross grain cut. You know, I should have no problem. I want nice sharp edges for this, for the bed because I'm gonna put solid wood edging on this and the parts that are exposed, so. My, so my first cut is 16 inches, and I'm going to cut 16 and a quarter, 14, so I'm going right here, 16 and a quarter, and I don't know, like, should, I, should you check with the tape measure? The only reason I like doing it is because you have the invisible inch. The biggest mistake anybody does is, is they meant to cut 16, they cut 50, you know. It's not bad if you go bigger. So I'm going a little oversized because I want 16 here, one piece so 16 by 58 and 7 eighths. So I have my sheet here. I'm going to go turn on my vacuum. I'm going to go get my headphones. And I'll show you how to set up a, a sheet. You might think, oh, okay, well, I just push it through. No big deal. There's a way. And it will make it super safe, everything else. The big thing that I have, I have my push stick. And the only thing I'll, I'll say about this one, my opinion, but I saw that plastic thing they, they try to sell. I, I've never tried it, so I'm not going to mouth off. But 
what makes this great, like you can just do the cutout, I, I will share this, I'll, I'll post this up, is let's say I push through with my fingers, right? Now, when the blade's lifting up, I can go like this all day long. And I'm, I'm okay, I'm, I'm not setting this up. I'm, this is really it. It's just plain gravity. It's just because your fingers can only push here. When you get this, and now I got pressure right here, but more importantly, I got pressure further up, which, you know, like I don't want my hand. And I turn on slight angle, make sure I'm on a fence. And I can't, like, uh, I can't even pull, pull that up. Now, I know I'm secure. I got this pushed down on the blade, pushed on the fence, my fence is secure. I'm in control of this table saw. Nobody else is. And no stupid accidents. And there's a misconception or whatever with a lot of people that if you, you know, when you have a beautifully balanced tool, sharp lace, there's nothing like cutting it. It's a joy. Like I do it all day long. I'm gonna get ear protection and turn on the vacuum. All right, so I'm gonna go with my first sheet. Um, there's, I don't know, not much really talk. How high should you go? I like to go about a healthy inch and a half above here on three quarter. Now I'm gonna start it, and I have a cart right here level with my sheet. Like you get yourself a cart, whatever. If you don't have room in your crotch and you can't cut plywood like this, don't do it. Just don't. Uh, there's other ways. You can go to Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever, they'll cut this stuff for you. You know, give them your cutting list, you don't have to do it. But if you're set up and you want to be independent and you want to do more cuts, in. what I learned a long time ago is how to handle a, a sheet of plywood. Now, you can, you can try this, like practice this, you know, the blade lower. Right now, I, I don't need to, I'm not really worried about it. So, and it's starting here, I'm on the table. I could have put my uh, slider here and made it a little more smoke. And I, I'm not doing it on purpose, and I know not everybody has a slider. Grab your point at the corner right here. Now, I'm pushing right here, I'm on the fence. Alright, now I know I'm there. Now here's the trick. Do not go in the back here and try and push it with you like this. But when I'm here, I'm on that face. You can't do this. I had three quarters, or if I was doing, I don't know, say, eight inch pieces or whatever, I cut that sheet down first. And then that way I could do it all day long. But take it and and practice without the blade, lower the blade, and, and just get that control. Because when you're like this, and you, you're trying to do it, okay, so how are you getting it on the fence? How do I keep the push from here on that fence? I do that. But when I go here, it's not going anywhere. That's all there is to it. All right? Try to get cards to keep things at decent level so you're not killing yourself. You know? And the trick is to slide things. Slide, slide, slide. And you'll, you'll be doing this for many years. And now I'm going to spin around and set it to 16. Um, I have to rotor all the edges on the parts. I use solid wood edging. It's a little over a quarter inch thick. I used uh, mahogany, which was left over. And it made mahogany was very easy to work with. It wasn't that much of a struggle. Uh, I prefer that to iron on edging. I mean, iron on edging is just going to come undone over the years and get banged up. So off it goes to the spray booth. This can be the hardest part of all those pieces. Uh, they use quarter inch thick. And when I put them together, there, you know, there could be like 64th of an inch of a gap. And then you get a little bit of telegraphing, which means 
it's copying uh, the little defect plus uh, the woods you know mahogany and walnut are very porous so with with that you can you know you can get a little bit of a wave and you know trying to be perfect here so I coat and first first few coats I did I used only a block I didn't I didn't dare take an orbital to it and now I'm getting ready with the final coat and what the trick is with the sander go left right up and down left right up and down and the reason for that is if you go one way to the, the other say you go left to right is uh, you can create little waves in it and you, you will you will see them um, a lot of people think sanding is easy it's probably one of the hardest things in cabinet making to master it, it's it's not that easy so here here I go uh, up down left right uh, sanding away there um, it has to be, I guess, one of the most boringest things. Um, I don't have a dust collector hooked to the vacuum. I have the door wide open. I'm not really worried about it. And But I am worked on, finally, uh, a proper uh, dust vac for my uh, equipment. It was the hardest thing. I went through so many of them. And none of them really worked well, you know. And I could see, like, you get little pings, like a little dust buildup. So you just flick those off. And there we go, up, down, left, right, you know, and you can see little white spots or little gaps filled with dust. So there's no easy way to to do this. This can take finishing can take long as long longer to make it. All right, there's after the spring. Now here is the reclaim I'm using for the headboard. Um, it was all taken out of a house. It was boards I'm using the upside down part yeah upside down uh, meaning the other part where they painted throughout the years that's why you can see little lines there and you know there's green and uh, some blue uh, I'm really just trying to clean up the wood it's important it has the same thickness of the wood All right, now we have this, uh, the bed frame in position. And you see here <clears throat> why I'm so critical. I want my molding. I'll show it with this one. This is not the header, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be pushed out another three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna have to make a little notch here after, but, but I'm very happy with what I have going on here. You know, and um, so this, that's why this this one's a little critical. I allowed five inches, and I got four and three quarter. Now, this is and I'm moving it over a bit right there to that edge. And I want to touch more. You might say, oh, gee, you're, uh, I know I ask myself a lot of questions in these videos and I'm wondering, gee, the guy's got a lot of questions. See, it's going to go like this. And I go right here. I'm going to biscuit it in and it's going to come out here. But the pine's going to push this out. So I allowed myself to make a little rabbit here. I like to put a little rabbit right over this and this should come out awesome and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep it simple stupid now I, now I can go here and I know where my pine is I didn't want to do it on the back beforehand it was really like awkward to do it because now I, now I can do a nice pattern I can do anything here and then I'll push it in if I have a little gap here I think I could screw it in and I could put a little little trim or something and then jump up on the bed, you know? But I'd rather do this. I, I feel it's better for the way I'm doing it. So now I'm going twice. I like to see my lines. 
I don't want to make a mistake, and that's where I want to go. Now, here's the other part. I got cabinets going to the right, eh? So, I got 18-inch cabinets going here. From here, but I got, they, they got to meet on that wood there. You see right there? And what do we have? 18 and a quarter. Was that, was that fluky? Or <laughs> what? It's... The, I didn't set this up or, 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 or go and try to get the best light. It's dry fit, dry fit, dry fit, even if it takes a few days. I saw some of the YouTube videos on this, and they make this like one day. No way in hell. I had a full-blown cabinet shop with uh, tables uh, uh, working on a bench. You're trying to make this thing on the floor, and you got your wife helping? Have a little patience. Keep, take a deep breath. They are worth it. It does work, but... Um, you got to make sure that, you know, you get this right. Because I don't want to screw up this door. You know, I got the door inside. And we're confident it's going to fit. You know, but. So, that's why I have it. So, let's, let's see how it's looking now. Now, it's looking pretty good. Um, I'm looking here at my header where it goes. And see the base now? I'm gonna to have to bring that up. I think I'm getting a little happy here. And I'm gonna show you why. I'm so focused this way. Uh, I made it a little smaller, but I'm not sure how this bed looks when it goes on here because there's a little lip here when it when it comes up right there, and then it stops. It catches up here. You know. And I think I'm a touch over three quarters with this. Yeah, I'm about one inch, so I'll be I'll have a little gap there, but I don't think that's a big deal. But the big deal is this. When I come here with my molding, what I'm gonna do I'd like I'd like it like this. So I'm, I'm going to raise this about an inch. So I'm right about here. I'd like to be right here. This is my ideal spot. Right on, right on that mahogany edge. And so when I go, when I get this in here, I'm going to go double check. And that's the advantage of dry fitting, especially there, because I have already know that there's a quarter inch difference on that floor right there. So when I put that there, I'm just going to bring that up. A quarter inch and I, I should get this I want to get this sitting right so I know my my my, my case is a little unique because you know I'm, I'm biting it in there so it'll have the same reveal as this this one's a little wider than the five inch but that's okay I can live with that but it's a totally it's a totally different unit okay here we go we're putting our new plank in I got a really nice fit, but what I did is I squared them up, up, like I took them on the table saw outside, and I'm just doing it on site. And now I'm just going here, slightly rounding the edges. I'm peeling them in, and I'm bouncing a bit. So that's it. I'm going to take a couple of 16 gauges. How's my ridge? A little bit of a ridge there. Pretty flush there. I'm going to just sneak one here. That's not bad. That's not bad. Right now, I'm only going into, I'm not going into any stud. Just using it there to hold it. Now, coming up here. And look at these gorgeous boards. 10 inches. They've come out of a 100, I think it's a 120 year old home. Now I'm snug, I know I am, and I did that on purpose. That's what I want, I want that kind of fit. Now I'm just gonna go here. And this is my pattern. And Gonna hammer 
it too much. Let me push it up. I just want to make sure. So when I'm creating a pattern, I'm going to use this word. Keep it simple, stupid. I'm not going to measure here. I'm going to go here, make a little tick. And that way, I know I'm not going to make a mistake. I just make a little tick right here. Come up with my tick. And... Then go my 45 on the outside. That's it. You see the pattern I did? I'm using the colors that I had made. I loved using the wide board because they're kind of rare sometimes in reclaims when you get it. A lot of times they split at the ends here or they split in the middle because the wood's so dry. Somebody might, I know I always say, oh, I was trying to answer questions that haven't been asked. Somebody might say, well, what about seasonal movement? You hear that in wood a lot, like, you know, it's the, the dagger. Um, but in this case, this wood being 100 years old, I've done a lot of reclaimed. Barely moves. The wood is so much lighter and all the moisture has really left the wood. It doesn't become as, as, as problematic as kiln dried or or especially two by four, especially in our area, they, they leave it like saturated and when they go in the house, they shrink to nothing. Um, so you don't really have too much of a problem. I have a little gap here, but whoop de do, you know, it's, it's part of the look. So we'll, we'll show the finishing. So I go like this, then I got my line. This is painstaking. See what I mean by the uh, the wood being brittle and why you're losing it, you know? That's why when you, when you see a piece like that, it's really, what's deciding how I do this is the wood. How much I have left and the lights. I didn't put a white up here to match this. I, I want to break this and I'm going to change the angle. You know, you can tell here I got a little off. And this one almost fits. It's like a, a blade width difference on one to the other. So now I got this piece and come out um, here. The best way I've found is just to trace it. Uh, trying to gang cut those. Uh, they're going to be a little off here and there because you know sometimes uh, you, there's vibration on the saw or little little things. You never have wood perfect. Um, so right there cut, go back, cut, go back and usually it might take me a couple of times. Uh, the the, the pattern is decided by the wood. Now, the, I dry fitted it to make sure everything was okay. I got locked in. Um, that has to be dead straight for the molding. <clears throat> We're here next day after the install of the uh, Murphy bed. Um, as you can see, the gaps right there, I have it pretty decent. I have it within a 32nd of an inch uh, down below. It was brutal to, to get it there. And you can see the other, you can see reveal on the side. It's slightly off about an eighth, but after when I get it up, I want it right about here. So that's just a matter of putting a little piece there and just bringing that, bringing that out. Now, the other headache I had was this car available, which goes up on top. Um, I think what I did when I measured it, I measured the molding five inches on top, but I allowed, I measured it from the outside, so I added 10 inches. But by rights, it should have been four and a quarter, four and a quarter. And the reason for that is, 
see the end right here I'm gonna point right there that's where it gets cut off so I'm not happy about that and I can't go over like I could go over a little bit on the left and it wouldn't look bad because because I got it popped out a bit but I can't on the right because I got a door going there so what are you gonna do eh you know I don't, I don't want to I don't really don't want to make that another one and you know just the same result so I got a solution and I think it's gonna look a lot better so you know check back let's see how I make out after this other than that, I'm happy. The, the only the tips I would give is, like I said in the other one, make sure you have sides because those plywoods very givey. The other thing you don't recommend on the install is towing it into the floor, putting a, a, a screw. I think that's a must. I found when I was installing and had it screwed on top, it was slightly moving on the bottom. It was kicking out a bit and it was throwing me off. The other thing that these things, because I guess you, you got like a double door and, you know, you got 60 inches. If you're like a 16th out of an inch in one corner and the other corner, all of a sudden you can be almost a quarter inch out on this thing. These It's not easy to get these things built in, but I do love their hardware. I love their shocks. I love their metal. Uh, everything's rigid. Uh, so it's a big plus. I think they're just used to building these and slapping them on a wall with no cabinets or anything beside them. To, so uh, be wary of that. You really got to suck it up. I did it yesterday and I had to take it down again because I wasn't happy with the install. And then when I did, it moved a lot. Like I, I couldn't get it back. Then I, it, it took about almost the whole afternoon to get that. Uh, to get that reveal where I'm happy and also at the same token make sure that there's no chance of movement like this because it, it did get knocked out once and uh, that would be a disaster right about now you know so I gotta make sure this thing is like really bolted in when I open it on the headboard I'm gonna sneak a couple more screws in there uh, I'm not taking any chance because this thing is really top heavy and you only have they only want the screws on top which so so here's my solution and if you could see I made a return right right there on top and it's gonna be bumped out ever so slightly and they will take care of my inch on the side and what I also did is I cut a, a scrap piece the same length I put where I want my carving, which is this piece there, and at both ends. So I know, because I got I have to install this part first, the middle, this car available, then put my two end cuts at the end. And that should solve my problem. I think it's going to give a little bump out, which I like, and I think it's going to look gorgeous. And that's it. That was a, a save, I guess, as you would call it. But, you know, that, that was about, you know, I don't want to, like, boast. I was trying to be careful. But that was about my biggest mistake so far. You know, it could be worse. I could be cutting that cabinet down. It's too tight. But you can see here on the cabinet, I just had enough. I'm only talking, like, a sixteenth. What I could have done, though, is cut this molding dent back, which I didn't have to. So I'm, I'm happy about that. So I'm going to install this first. And what I'll do... If you see the letters up there in the corner, that's where I put the brads. I'm using um, inch and a half brads. I'll use PL to put that up on top here. It should be, it's going to be a mess to take out the bed if you ever had to change the shocks. I don't think the um, hardware you would ever, ever change. So that should be pretty good. And you can see right there, there's my notch on top. And there's my notch on top. I got this molding sticking out about a quarter of an inch. So it's going to have a nice visual effect, you know. And it wasn't designed to be exact to the left. It was to be its own thing. You know, like a, like, like a door, really. That's what, it, that's what I'm trying to create. So let's see how I make out. And I'll show you one other up close. See there, 
Right there. That's the bride. You can barely see it, eh? Right at the corner there. And only, I don't even know if we even need a little bit of putty. I'll, I have this clear putty that has the same right. finish. Um, and I'll put a little bit on it. it but you can't even, you can't even uh, tell. I would say less than six so of an inch. It's not as Thing bad as it looks to put up. And mm. now i got to fix my goof up. Um, now I cut the 45. I put duct tape. Close the duct tape. Um, you know, make sure it's spread around. The end grain's the worst because the end grain drinks the moisture of the wood. So, you know, and then the by duct tape on the other side prevents leaking also. And I got the other duct tape to keep it tight. You, and you don't need to clamp it. Just make sure it's nice and tight. And, at the, you know, at the end, that's it. I fixed my goof up. All right, well, you can see a big improvement. It's Friday. I got all this installed. It took me almost a week to like, put the bed together. Uh, I, I gave the extra coat on, on this panel. Uh, we installed it. Um, very happy with the way it turned out. Now, what I'm doing is I always preach about no more nails. And I use a combination of No More Nails and PL. I got two 2x4s in here, locked. I took the 2x4s, screwed it up inside here. And I got this whole section locked in the bed, plus the screws they recommend, plus I have it locked in on the bottom. And I have it locked in on the fireplace over on that side. So, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not happy with, like, I love the bed, but I'm not happy with the install sheet. I think it's silly to just, they, they want you to put three, three bolts on the top. That's it. Now, what about the bottom kicking out? So, I think it takes a little bit of common sense, eh? So, I'm happy with my Murphy bed. Now, what I did here is I took a little transition piece. Right here is like no man's land. When I say no man's land, I had to, I pulled this out. This section is, believe it or not, almost a half an inch here. And I got I got my doors in, my drawers in. And if you look at my other video, the island video, I show how to install drawer faces. So go, I didn't do it on this one to show what I... Why I chose uh, this car available was because I was inspired from the 30s, those gorgeous skyscrapers they did in New York City and Art Deco movement. It was just such a beautiful uh, craftsmanship. And I'd like to believe at that time, a lot of those workers that they had about 20, 30 years under their belt started in Victorian factories. And they had made amazing stuff. Anybody seen Victorian furniture? They were carved, everything else. Then the arts and crafts movement took hold in 1910, you know, Frank Lloyd Wright and, and everything else. And the work to them was dumbed down. And I think they were frustrated and things like that. Then when the skyscraper boom happened in the 30s, Chrysler and everybody else wanted to make bigger, better, and, you know, be the best. And they were, you know, letting them, I guess, letting them loose on the interiors. And they made these amazing interiors uh, to this day that stand the test of time. And that's my t take on it, how it evolved. Um, anybody else want to write in the comments and give their little take on how it was involved? And if you see that picture, this car available, that's what inspired me. This is my take. I'm not copying it word for word. This is my experience on how I would do it. Uh, this is with the bed open. As you can see, it's quite invi inviting. And as it says above, this car available. And you can see our headboards slash uh, flag or whatever you want to call it. Um, just needs a little piece on top. There's always that little finishing that you weren't sure of. And that's because I end up raising it about almost two inches more than what I thought. Um, that's just one of those things. The other thing you can see right here, why I was really attracted to it, are the shocks. 
I think they're a must. If you're going to do any Murphy bed or get anything, make sure it has shocks. And you you won't be disappointed with it. It can close in one hand. Um, the other thing is it needs a bar right across there to lift it up as one piece. Uh, other than that, the mattress was at Amazon. We can give a link for that a little later. That worked out really, really well. And as I said before, and I'll say it again, thank you for watching our video.